Welcome back to Brews with the Homies. This is your host, Brews with D Bro. We got James, Heron, JB, and myself. JB, you brought two incredible beers, it looks like, so let's just dive into the first one. Right. I brought one. Heron brought the other. I'm not going to steal his thunder on that Oh, one. sorry. But, I, it looked like the same stout bottle we had on the pot. Right, my no, fault. My no, fault. you're good. You're good. So the first one is going to be from Thomas, our boy in Arizona decided to send us a little package of goodies and we appreciate him i've been kind of sipping on some of them and this one i wanted to share on the podcast because it's something we haven't had before uh, it's from dissolver and this one is going to be a french style pilsner with river bend malt um uh, pilsner chip malt and uh some other stuff so 5.1 percent and Cool can art on it, a bunch of skulls, and they're known for doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Like some of their beers range from fruited sours to IPAs, and we will at some point do an IPA of theirs on the podcast also. So wanted to start off light on this episode, then Heron's gonna take over and talk about his peer project. Uh I think this one's a bourbon barrel age imperial style with vanilla. So let's start off with the Pilsner first, boys. I'm gonna be honest with you. I already uh, nose. I like snorted. Nose dived. Yeah, nose dived. It smells great. Mm. Heron, Ooh. you look like you got a lot to say, so you should go first. This face says a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like it's kind of like grassy and refreshing. Heron made me laugh too much, but yes. Yeah, we started this episode laughing while he did the intro. Like, he's, he's awesome. <laughs> I don't I even know him. what the hell we're laughing about. We're just having a good time. Yep, having a good time. It's the homies. Um, yeah, this one, man, like, bready, light, flavorful. A lot of nice things going on at a low ABV. That's what we like. This is definitely drinkable, refreshing. I love it. I know D-Bro's going to say something like, this would be great on the golf course, because it definitely would be. It would that be was, great. <laughs> and actually, it would was, be great before work. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> to, I start work at 6? No, that's not a good idea. Um, no, what I was going to say it's is... Replacement is, of orange juice. <laughs> there you go. Might as well throw some champagne in there, too. Um, no, what I was going to say is, is, like, at first when I had this, it kind of reminded me, like, as a, like a lime bud light almost but then that was my first taste and you know what they say you can never judge a, a beer by its first taste i mean you can but they tell you to have like your first second third i'm on my third sip here and everything that you guys have said is what it is and you're not wrong this would be good on the golf course but this one's not really that high on the scale for me i'm okay. gonna be honest i think this one for me it's about like a four, three, five. Okay, that's still. Yeah, what do you mean? Ah. I think he saw like you just scan the QR code here and show some of their beers on there. He saw this Italian pilsner with like a little pizza slice zombie thing looking on it, and I think that caught his attention. He's like, "Man, I want that. I want pizza." So I made the yeah, mistake. No, I should. I should have brought that one. I literally, I that. was when I saw that, I was like, "Oh man, pizza would go great with this. Pizza and some wings, you know." Yeah. Hundred percent. Hey, my I had bad, that my yesterday. Four point five is pretty good. Oh, four point three five. Oh, I'm so sorry. Three five. It's still pretty good. It's okay. still it's something that I would grab to. I just wouldn't grab a four pack. I think I would grab like two. Okay. You know? No. Right. James, what do you think? I'm just shocked about his rating. To be honest, I mean, a four point three five. You're making it sound like you were gonna go down in the threes. <laughs> Honestly, that from way the way you normally like. Talk about a beer, like in the fours, you're like, man, golf course beer, I would grab a four pack. Nah, this one's a two packer. Oh, I mean, you didn't say you'd grab a four pack, so yeah. But yeah, two pack is good. Uh, okay, so my review, I like it a lot. Again, nothing really great that stands out, but it's very solid, very good summer beer. Uh, I would say 4.4. 4. Okay. Shirt and shorts again. Nice. Ooh. Aaron? I don't know if at this point in the podcast that, like, I just love beer or what, but that shit tastes so good. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, hey, he's hey, it on the same level right here. You guys here. finished We're, it. I mean, <laughs> dude, what the fuck are you guys on? It's like, like damn. No, dude, I, I thought it was great. What yeah, you, no. but, like, 
I mean, under your rating, I'd get naked and like run for ten minutes. <laughs> in <dude>. Barcelona? <laughs> I mean, probably, yeah. Or, yeah Spain. Spain, Spain is what it is. But Barcelona, we can do Barcelona if you want. I mean, Spain, Spain. What? What now? Yeah. What are you going to no, say? I just agree with you, man. I, I don't know <laughs> what if this is where we're at in the podcast, but I mean, this... You guys holding hands while we're running down the beach for 10 minutes I guess so. Yeah, we're running down that beach. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just... Got a pool with no chicks? Pilsners sometimes can just get so muddled. They're just... They're too hoppy. And... It's a fine line. I think this one just is perfectly balanced. There's a light, nice little breadiness to it, and I don't. Know, I would definitely have this stocked in the fridge. I would grab eight cans just any day. I want a light beer, and it's just that I go in waves, right? You know, Dustin knows his favorite saying: "Triple whore." I always drinking my triples. Hey, I brought a quad to do, but we've been drinking too much, so we can't have that. But this definitely refreshing, and I would take it any day. So. My rating, I would give it a 4.8 for sure. Love it. I almost thought 4 was the top of the scale, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, wait, are we what back was, in school? Did, what the wait, fuck did, are we did doing? Did you get your rating? No. Okay, what's he your rating? He rarely rates, but let's see. I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, like on a, on a GPA scale, this is like a 4.2. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is... They did extra so credit. They you... had... Like, they're, they're yeah. passing. They're... They're, they're going Still for a high Still a four is right? really good, bro. So, no, no, no. No, he's saying on the GPA scale. So this out of, is out of above a, a five. Out of a four. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reclassify my rating because I just finished this. And okay, what? what? Like, trying to redeem yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I four, am. Four is passing, bro. Well, so I'm going to be honest with you. Four, four is an this eight. Was, yeah. This was very, this was like James after finishing school. it. I can see why you guys like it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, All right, come on, what's your rating? You guys are something else. I'm yeah. just like, yeah. did you, I'm are so you gonna confused. Re-rate it? Like, yes, I am. Right I, I was saying is, is like now that I finished the beer and had a little bit more of like the body of it and everything, I think I'm gonna change it to a four six. Ooh, okay. I think this is a four pack grabber now. I, I like I said, I'm just changing it because like I don't know if I had like the like a bad. <laughs> Spot of it. He said, yeah, that's James why I called you out, bro. I called you out. He's like, you know what? After James, I, I'm gonna make him look dumb real quick. <laughs> but no, I, 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 don't look dumb. Because, I don't look listen, dumb because I called him out. Yeah. Listen, so we have had a couple beers that are very strong on the palate, right? Yeah. I think that's kind of the thing that me and Heron having this, like, it refreshed our palate, and we we're really digging into it. And I think maybe it took a couple more sips for you to get, yeah. okay, clear that palate, get everything back on I, there. I feel like I still had the bourbon and, and yeah, coke everything. and the and the stout from the last time. Wait, yeah. what kind of coke? Coca-Cola. All right, good. All right, good. Yeah, we don't do none of that here. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> Make it more believable. He yeah. does motherfucker, dude. <laughs> no, no, sir. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But uh, honestly, I, this is a high-rated beer yeah. for all of us. This yeah, is actually like a first time that we all agree that's a high four, you know? Yeah. Um, Thomas can keep sending more. Yeah, Thomas, yeah. Thomas, 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 we love your beer. Yeah. Thomas, we love your beer. I've just never yeah. seen a four so, like, depressing in my life, though. That's what I'm yeah, saying. This dude everybody. thinks he's barely passing with a four. Yeah. Shit, I was graduating at 3.5 at this point. So. Yeah, yeah, no, you're the, yeah, everyone graduated. I mean, a 3.5 <laughs> is good. I don't know. <laughs> Making it sound like, ah, oh, you just barely passed, bro. Just Sorry, like, we're, we base our ratings off of untap, and untap only goes yeah. up to a five. Yes. So, I, so, so Aaron was trying to be special. Yeah, yeah. everybody gets rated differently. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, we oh. all got di- we're all different in our own ways. Yeah. But I, I yeah. want to hear what Heron brought from Pure because uh, you know on right, this cool. podcast we're kind of some Pure Project stands here. Yes, yeah, sir. Yep. So we got a Liquid Alchemy, and it's that Bourbon Barrel Age Imperial Stout with vanilla, and and funny enough it has like a little Tiku glass and it looks like very. Uh, kind of, I don't know, mixing potions and shit. Yeah, like deal, you know? mythological or something. Like, are we, are we wizards? I don't know. Yeah, wizards up you know, in here? Like fucking Harry Potter shit. I don't know. Like, uh, I was gonna say like more like. I Merlin. thought I thought you guys didn't like Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, okay. It's me no. that doesn't. I don't like do you? You don't like Harry Potter, no. right? I guess I'm the only Potter yeah. person here. So. I mean, I don't know. Like, if the girl I'm talking to likes Harry Potter, I like Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. cheers. All right, so you a little like bit more background on this. Well, cheers, but off the description. Basically, it's a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout infused with organic Tahitian vanilla beans. <laughs> it's 
Bourbon barrel aged on three different barrels. So this is a big point. Aged for 17 months in wild turkey rye barrels, 18 months in 1910 Old Forester select barrels, and 30 months in Breckenridge bourbon barrels. So it's supposed to be a multi-layered experience. Bourbon, chocolate cake, snickerdoodle cookies, and it's supposed to give um, chocolate ganache, toasted marshmallow, and vanilla caviar. Okay, there's a lot going on. Hey, there's a lot going on right here. He's uh, snorting his beer, having a good Well, time. I accidentally gave him a little elbow. That's why when you were talking, I was laughing a little bit. So, dude, shut the fuck up and drink this thing. It's so good. It's All right, so now good. I'll drink. Now I'll drink. Try to be honest with you, this is like a dessert exploded in my so mouth. So I thought. Holy uh, shit. I thought, what's it called? Um, Ooh. What is that fucking triple blend, triple barrel blend thing again? From where? Pure Project. Yeah. They oh. make that. They make that one beer, and it's like their most expensive beer. It's like forty-two bucks oh, for this the, profile. Oh, um, the gold wax is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, so this is fridge, this yes, is better no. than that. Holy shit! I had no idea it was this good. Yeah, this is to be really honest good. with you. I would have cut straight to the chase. This is a fucking five. Mmm. This are, is a motherfucker. Are we all life. holding hands in Spain, boys? Uh, 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 uh. No, come I, on, come on. No. Is I'm by myself. Across? Well, Harry's got to do I'm it. I'm by myself know. doing the helicopter. Oh, okay, no, all right. Relax. Relax. He did ruin it. He did ruin it. I'm well, sorry. we'll be going right, to a different three, beach three, without three, you, three. so. See, because of Dustin, mine's a 4.99 now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. Yeah. We're not helicoptering anytime soon, boys. Um, Shit. Helicopter, uh, helicopter. <laughs> there's dust in the corner. Oh, man. Um, all right, so we'll try to get into this one. Dustin, since you're ready to do the five, you cut to the chase. What is going on in your mouth right now? I told you. It feels like a dessert exploded mm -hmm. in my mouth. Okay. Uh, like, you snickerdoodle. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, just, you can taste the three levels of the barrel almost. Yeah. Um, I feel like you get the front, I think, it's hard to pinpoint the barrel for me, because I'm not very good at pinpointing the barrels, but I feel like there's three different flavor profiles that I'm getting, yeah. and I feel like it's the barrels, but then there's this sweet taste mm -hmm. at the end mm -hmm. with the cinnamon, where I'm just like, oh my god, this is delicious, I wish I had a snickerdoodle cookie with this, yeah. like, it's, no, you said, said there was Snickers bar no snickerdoodle like oh snickerdoodle i thought it was snickerdoodle. what Harris said earlier what Harris yeah. said earlier about the 42 dollar beer that or bottle that pure has and that this is better than that i haven't had that one but for me personally from all the pure stouts that we've had on the podcast that we've reviewed that we've talked about the ones that we shared yeah. at everywhere this one takes the cake and it's wow. like there's like it's in its own tier now i i feel like this is one of those stouts that takes the stout game up another notch and i would honestly have this over some of the horror styles that we've had yeah i mean it's absolutely incredible uh it's surprising because you know dustin came from not liking stouts you've Fucking seen him hating stouts to not Progress. trying stouts and so i'll have a little bit ah this is okay ah this one's okay I'm getting better yeah yeah and it's been what since we started the podcast that this journey has gone on with stouts for me and i told you guys i mean you can go back to the other episodes i told you guys fuck stouts never gonna drink them they're ass they're this that and the next thing and now full revelation i'm sitting here claiming that this is the best stout i've ever had yeah. and and you do a really good job of picking up everything because uh first thing i get barrel right in the middle you get a different barrel a little bit sweeter then you start to get that rush of sweetness coming in cinnamon I want to really kind of highlight this point. The cinnamon is so well done to the point where it's not intrusive, it is not burning, it's not like a fireball cinnamon, it's not anything that's going to really ruin the flavor of the barrel, the taste of the sweetness. That's what makes it incredible on so many levels and makes it like a dessert beer, like maybe like a tiramisu, like with that kind of like a little bit of cinnamon spice in there. And Dustin just hit. There's three points of barrels in there that you could taste. The sweetness in the middle to end really just ramp it up and allow you to really enjoy that finish that makes it so nice and clean. And it just very well done. It's very surprising that, you know, Heron with the membership and doing the Cellar Syndicate, we're getting bottles and he picks them out that we want to try and the taste on the pod. If we knew this was even 
ounce is good or like any inclination of that is going to be this good we would have multiple bottles of this this is one that is absolutely incredible across the board and it's nice to find something like that Aaron, especially at the price point. i gotta give you knuckles for this point this this selection dude that was it's you, crazy you, yeah, yeah it's really, really bro good. it's wild and i can't believe it and like like we said we're pure project stands up here but like at the end of the day the, what they produced is fucking fantastic like, yeah because ingredient was that other ball the ingredient there we go well, that was that triple blend kind yeah. of deal and i thought that was like the best like it was my favorite just because like when you get into the barrel age stuff you could get like some stuff that's just like two barrel yeah you know where i'm like i still want a little bit of that stout you know what i'm saying yeah. like I, I still want some of that and pure project just kind of kills it like uh, their bottling process everything whatever is going on like they put their vision in this bottle yeah. and it's just so approachable so drinkable and i think that's the best part it's 13.8 percent um you know it's not to me personally it's not like syrupy and stuff because when you go on a tap there's so many people that have different opinions right it's still rated pretty high i think it has like 100 and something check-ins at like 4.36 and some mm -hmm. people say it's a little syrupy, it's a little boozy, but I don't know. The temperature we're having at it, or having it at right now, nice. It's slightly chilled, but warm enough to get all the flavors out. And nothing tastes syrupy. All the flavors are working well together. And I think since we've had so many incredible stouts on this podcast and we've shared such great beer, we are really good at least judging the characteristics of a stout and being able to classify them for people that enjoy them on that level of drinkability flavor and not being only a bourbon lover and wanting a big bourbon barrel aged stout and i think even if you are a bourbon lover you're going to be able to taste the different characteristics in the different barrels that they use so this is like a home run because it hits it on multiple levels for different people and that's what we're looking for in a beer right we want to share with people we want to introduce people to beer that can be drank on different levels from different experiences i'm going to be quite honest with you I want to share this beer with anybody else. <laughs> you want it for yourself? I, no, 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 no. Uh, with everybody on the podcast here, mm -hmm. I would definitely share it. And people that we've had on the podcast mm -hmm. before, I would definitely share it with them. But anybody else new, I, I would try to keep it very limited so we had more to drink. Because that's how fucking phenomenal this yeah. is. That, like Heron said, man, like Peer Project, I don't know if it's their bottling. I don't know what it is. But when it comes down to their process of putting this together, it just, they knocked it out of the park. They did what they wanted to do. They accomplished it. And... That's funny because, like I told you guys, we're Peer Project snot stands up here. Like, I go to Corey's and somebody's like, hey, man, like, you're grabbing a shit ton of beer. Like, what should I grab? I like IPAs. I like this. I was like, oh, I get a Peer Project. So, like, why? I was like, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, Peer Project is one of my favorites. But the level of consistency that Peer Project has, the amount of what they say is on the can, it is it is what it is on the can. And it's very there's been maybe one time that I had one pure can that was bad. Yeah. That one out of the hundreds that I've had. <laughs> so, like, don't get me wrong, they still have that one can out of hundreds that I've had that's like, oh, okay, but yeah. past that, they're consistent. They always deliver, they always take it up a notch, and I can't wait to see what the next one is going to be yeah. that they do. That's a three-barrel-aged... Uh, I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I mean, even Heron and I, um, off pod, have had uh, one of the new seller syndicates, and we've just enjoyed so much of their stuff. They have such, they always take chances too. That's the great thing is, they're always expanding what they're doing. They're I just always wish trying they would bring different back stuff. the catch and release. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the one. I know that's your dude. Yeah. That's yeah. your one. Yeah. That is my one. You know what the worst and part they is? They brought so much stuff back. <laughs> they brought back everything. They <laughs> sold shirts of this mm. beer. But never brought the beer back. I still have the catch and release shirt at home. I yeah. think on the next pot I'll bring it to wear. Yeah, yeah you gotta yeah, wear it. Wear, yeah, like so I wear it. I have one too. Yeah, don't you? Yeah, I have one too. Yeah. 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 Have one too. We ha hey, we have the sticker for it. Everything. You know what, Peer Project? If you're listening to this, <laughs> if you bring that beer back, I will get the can, the whole can tattooed right oh, here. Oh shit! Whatever if you bring it back, I whatever will get his credit card right though it is, he'll, he'll go. <laughs> And I will drive down and he to will the release. Shotgun it too. 
Oh, dude, I'll buy oh. 16 cans. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, Wait, no, you got to commit to a whole 24 case. 24? Yeah. All right, cool, bet. 24. A case, a tattoo, and a shotgun. And You're a keg. You make me a keg. Oh, and a keg. Oh, oh, shit. Let's get a keg. All right, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. Uh, we I'm, definitely have to get a keg, too. So yeah. We are definitely, you better be listening, Pure Project. Yeah. Yeah. We will you definitely what? be... Sending them. Yeah, message. that little clip is gonna get like. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna make that go viral. Yeah. 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 Gonna no, seriously. I, if they do it, I will buy a 24, 24 cans. I will yeah. buy a keg and I will shotgun there and, and I will get, get the tattoo there. All right, all right. Yeah. that will be that will be our viral. All right, there it is. Yeah, we're going viral, man. I'm right. being serious. I'm, Let, let's hope the person who has that recipe is still there. Let's hope. <laughs> and has it run off to yeah. somewhere and named it another thing? I, I hope not. If that's the case, somebody then send me the name. You're going to have to do some research. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody's going to send us the name because if that's the case, I, I, I'll go buy that instead. But... <laughs> But right, I will so say, we're gonna transition to James because he's been lonely. I, over there. No, yeah, I'm not lonely at all. I'm it, just it, hanging out. We want, we want to hear your thoughts on it. Too. I, I, there's nothing to say now. I mean, literally. Like, Damn it! You guys took everything. A- everything. Like, I mean, it, it. I will say my two cents. Everything you guys said is what I was gonna say. Really, I will say. In terms of a manly espresso martini, this is the manly version Ooh, of an espresso like martini. That. Damn. That was cute. Yeah, that okay. Was, yeah. We just need a martini glass. Hey, hey we, we drink a little pinkies tiku up? up there. Yeah. yeah. No wonder they throw the tiku up there. Like, this is, like, definitely... We drink them with pinkies up? Well, now or Yes, now we're drinking pinkies up. But, yes, I would say the espresso martini has been introduced with this pure project for the men. Damn. I like it. I mean, at the yeah. end, on the nose, you just, like, definitely you, get, like, dark fruit and, like, chocolate, right? Yeah, like, you do like, get a little coffee in there, too. That's what's great. Like, there's so many flavors like, in there, and I, I like that we all picked it up because... No one mentioned really coffee until James, and I think yeah. that is definitely a flavor that we did not mention on there that definitely comes across. I feel like now that this is warmed <laughs> up a little bit more, I feel like you definitely get that coffee taste mm-hmm. at the end. Yep. At first, I didn't get it as much, but now that this is warmed up and everything, yeah. you definitely do. Yeah. Damn, I mean, I've just been here hanging out, so <laughs> that's why when I looked at you when you were talking, I did one of these, and I go, ah, fuck, well, uh, I'm just going to wait, so. <laughs> he said... I'm next there, brother. <laughs> and then 20 minutes later, uh, here we go. <laughs> no, no. Sorry about that. No, man. good insights. No, no I, I love it. it. I, we're very passionate about so, this. So, Heron, you talked about this being the better one out of the three barrel stouts that Pure Project has done. My question is, where does this rank up on your stouts? Because you've had some crazy stouts. Where does this rank up against your favorites? On the Pure Project? Uh, actually, no, not, not Pure Project. On oh, anything. Oh, on anything. Oh, anything. Oh. Because Pure Project is my favorite producer like of stouts. I don't know. Like, all the other... Like, there, there are many people making incredible stouts, right? Yeah. yeah. But for my for my taste, I, I like them. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're kind of more on the sweeter side. You know? Like, I don't know. They, they might do whatever they do on the brewing side of thing. Boil it more. Whatever. To get those residual sugars going and i i enjoy that you know like maybe if it's like a super sweet pastry stout then it's like all right all right relax brother but like with this where they're kind of like actively trying to not make it as sweet with these multiple barrels it's like hell yeah no this is it because then you get that sweetness plus the barrel and it's just like even if the barrel doesn't come out as clear like i don't i can't i don't like the bourbon barrel i don't like bourbon really or whiskey or any type of that class necessarily myself anyway however when it's aged in it it's cute it adds a little you know you don't a little, want it over a little bit of depth right, right? yeah you mm-hmm. want the depth of it and that's where i think sometimes some of these stouts get lost right they're so big into pumping out this amazing stout that's been aged so long in these barrels and gets so much of the barrel flavor that it's great for people that are enthusiasts of bourbon that love it but for someone like us that can appreciate it on to a certain extent but i think heron hits the hits it perfectly is you want the balance to make it a nice little addition allow it to add flavor but then be able to really make the beer shine the stout flavors the you know make it a dessert add a little something extra in there and the coffee flavors and allow it to be approachable from multiple levels i think that's where pure project succeeds on so many of their beers you can make things approachable from 
the people just getting into beer or people that are die hard snobs about beer they find a great balance of pleasing everybody and that's so hard to do across breweries and because when you're a brewery that caters to a certain audience it's so hard to experiment and still be successful i i, I just want to ask this question because mm -hmm. i got i think two out of the three barrels yeah. you said it was wild turkey yeah, was, and oh. breckenridge right yeah, breckenridge was the what third. was the th the second was one the was second. 18 months and 1910 Old Forester Select Barrels. Forester. Okay. So for me, I feel like those three are similar barrels, but I feel like they all have their own little characteristic. But I feel like in this beer that they they hit all three barrels. I feel like each barrel has something that comes up. And I feel like that's hard to do in beer. Because sometimes you can kind of get those barrels and like, like Heron was saying, like the barrel can be so aggressive up front that you lose all the all the flavor of everything else on the side. And I feel like with this, you, you don't. Yeah. And like I just, again, thank you for bringing mm -hmm. it because, whoo, dude. Boom. I think this right now, we're July what? Today is the 8th? 9th. And it was Ninth. just 120 the other day? It was 120 on Monday. And, yeah. and I'm going to tell you right now. No, on Sunday, I think it was, right? For 2024, yeah. this is the beer of the year. Beer of the year. Stout in summer, baby. Let's yeah. go. Stout in SS, the summer. Babies. And the 120 right wait, wait, wait. the green that means weather. Else. But, <laughs> you know what? I, I, think this is, I think this is the beer of the year. I, I personally think that. That's going to be the beer. Okay, how about, how about, how about how okay. CSS? So you know what this means, right, what? Joseph? No. You got to add this to the bottle graveyard that you have at the house, oh, and awesome. then we got to revisit it at the end of the year when we do our we year review. Have to see, yeah, yeah. Because yes. there has been quite a few bangers, but in the stout category, I mean, man, I've had some good stouts, but see, this is the issue of personally for me when I rate stouts and what I like is we get into this area of. The bourbon lover, the coconut lover, the vanilla lover, or just all these different areas of stouts. Whereas I think this one, having the bourbon, having the vanilla, having the coffee, everything coming together with a little bit of cinnamon, snickerdoodle taste, that would please the most amount of people on the scale of trying to please everybody. Because you can't ever do that easily. Yeah. So when you get a beer like this, it's going to allow you to be like yes this is a candidate for beer of the year, beer of the year so definitely i agree with you and i think that man it's tough i've had some great ones and personally for me it's not my favorite stout but the issue is it, i still rate it a five because i respect it and i think it is in the top five but i'm also getting stouts that are crazy and hard to get and personalized for what i like yeah so that's where i still five out of five and i still would recommend this to anybody and it's going to be a top five beer no matter what and it'll probably be beer of the year for at least two of us maybe on the podcast so well we'll have to see in december yeah, we'll have to see in check. december so we got uh five more months boys of, yeah. uh, of beer tasting holy five shit more. only five more oh, and you know what that means right what in two months we got stout season and we got some tripping animal stouts still. Yeah, we still have. Oof. It's so always stout season, yeah, dude. Come on. You know, hey, we have so many stouts on the fridge, we have to have one all the time. So, but I, I want to say thank you, you guys, for continuing to support all of us. We appreciate it. We we love the fact that you guys still come up to us and say, hey, aren't you guys the brews with the homie guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Our hangout spots have kind of changed up. Uh, yes. We've started to go more towards Corey's. 595. Uh, 595 Tanea Creek, now known as Beer Zombies Co., Boulder City. Mm -hmm. um, where else have you guys been hanging out for uh, beer wise? It kind of depends. Like, you know, Silver Stamp's still one up there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Liquid Diet, yeah. if you're in the mood for some cocktails. Um, I still have to go there. Oh, yeah, you definitely. <laughs> Somebody's got to take you on a date there, brother. Like, I, I, I know. know. I, know. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. Uh, Maybe one of the boys has to take me on a date there. Oh, oh. Let's go. A little, a little zesty? No. Well, no. Nah, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Depends how many cocktails deep you are. Hey, you're Jamie right. might be feeling it. He's I don't like, know. His how many time, cocktails? His first time there, there, he might want all of them. We got a little, yeah, be a little we'll, careful. We got a little, we got a little stuff to still do. But I, I, still, at the end of the day, like, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for still listening to the podcast. And 
Like, I know we're goofy, we're silly, we're a little bit out there, but hey, that's it's what genuine. makes us. Yeah, it's genuine. It's who we are. Yeah. We'll keep it that's up. who we are. If you hang out with us at any of these places, this is how we are. This <laughs> is unfiltered, uncut, very, yeah. very us. So, yeah. thank you for everything. Until next time, cheers. 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 cheers.